Hey everyone, uh, this video is on solving absolute value equations and inequalities. And something in class we've been working on is how to find the absolute value, which is the distance from zero on a number line. But now we want to apply that to solving an equation. So let's say we have the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 4. Well, what could x be to make this true? A really easy answer is to think x could be 3. Because I know in my head that 3 plus 1 absolute value would equal 4. 3 plus 1 is 4, and the absolute value of 4 is equal to 4. That would totally work to make this equation true. And I can just, I can kind of just think of that. I don't really need to solve it or do a lot of math. 3 plus 1 is 4. I just can imagine that as the answer. But another possible answer for x that might be a little harder to think about is it could also be negative 5. And I know that because if it was negative 5 plus 1 inside the absolute values, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. But the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. Negative 4 is 4 spots away from 0 on the number line. So the absolute value of negative 4 equals 4 also works. So there's two answers for x here. One of them is x could equal 3 because we put a 3 in and it worked. And the other answer was x could equal negative 5. And we want a way to find these two answers to solve for x that doesn't require you to sit here and kind of guess in your head. We want some steps that we can follow. Because these equations are going to get much harder, so we're going to need some steps so you're not just sitting here trying to figure it out. So let's go through how we would do these equations by hand with, with a few extra steps involved. And we'll do a couple of examples. So I'm going to write example 1. And let's say, for our example, we're going to solve for x, and we're going to do it with this equation. Absolute value, 2x minus 3 close is equal to 15. Okay, well that means that inside this absolute value, I can either have a positive 15 or a negative 15 to make this true. So what I'm going to do is split this problem up into two options. Either 2x minus 3 has to equal 15, to make this absolute value work, or 2x minus 3 could equal negative 15, because the absolute value of negative 15 is positive 15. So now I can solve both of these little equations pretty quickly, because we're pretty good at this. Um, I'm going to add the 3 over to the 15. 2x equals 15 plus 3 is 18. And I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to 18 divided by 2, which is 9. So there's one answer. My other answer, I'm going to add 3 over to the negative 15. 2x equals negative 15 plus 3 is a negative 12. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals negative 12 divided by 2 is 6. And there's my two possible answers for x. So just split the problem up which is easy to do, but i got to point a couple of things out. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more work before you split the problem up. So let me show you another one that's a little bit different. Example 2. And remember, you can pause this video and write things down and go back and re-listen if I'm, if I'm going too fast for you. Let's say you had 2 absolute value x minus 3, close the absolute value, plus 1 equals 9. Okay, so now when I'm solving this problem, I'm not going to split it up right away because I have all this extra stuff on the outside. Inside this absolute value is not going to be a 9 or a negative 9 because we're multiplying by 2 and we're adding 1. So what I have to do is first I need to get rid of the outside stuff. I need to take the plus 1 and move it over to a minus 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. So I have 2 absolute value x minus 3 is equal to 8. And 2 absolute value means 2 times the absolute value quantity of x minus 3. So to get rid of a multiplication, I'm going to divide by 2 so I can get rid of this. And I'm going to divide the other side by 2 as well. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 4, which means either I'm going to have a positive 4 or a negative 4 inside of this absolute value. So now I'm ready to split it up. Now I'm ready to say x minus 3 has got to equal 4, or 
x minus 3 has to equal negative 4. And I'm going to solve each equation. And this will be really fast. I'm going to add the 3 over. 4 plus 3 is 7, so x equals 7 is an answer. I'm going to add the 3 over here. x is going to equal negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. There's my two answers for x. So if there's things on the outside of the absolute value, move them over because you have to get it to down to this step where it's just an absolute value equals a number before you can split it. Now, with that in mind, we're going to move to the next thing. So the next thing is, is what if it's not an equation but an inequality? So example three is I'm going to make one little change to these problems now. Um, let's say I had the absolute value of 4 plus x, but instead of writing equals 3, I'm going to write is greater than 3. Solve that inequality. Okay, so absolute value of 4 plus x is greater than 3. I'm still going to split this problem up. There's still going to be two different answers here. Either inside 4 plus x has got to be greater than 3, or I'm going to have 4 plus plus x needs to be a negative 3, but when I write it, negative 3, because I'm making it a negative, I'm going to have to switch my inequality around. I'm going to have to flip this sign to a less than symbol. And that's the trick on these. When I'm solving this absolute value equation, this inequality, I have to flip the sign when I change it to a negative. So flip the symbol. And the reason for this might be easiestly, easiestly explained to you um, by showing you the answer, to be honest. Why am I flipping the sign? Well, kind of let me show you. So I'm going to solve both of these real fast. Um, I'm going to subtract the 4 over. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, so x is greater than negative 1 is an answer. I'm going to subtract this 4 over, so I have x is less than negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. There we go. Then I'm going to take my two answers because they're inequalities and I'm going to put them on a number line. So I'm going to draw my number line, put 0 on the number line, and I'm going to focus on these boundary points, negative 1 and negative 7. So here's negative 1 as I work my way back. Negative 7 here. Here's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's negative 7. And what I'm going to do is circle those boundaries and shade according to these directions. So x is supposed to be greater than negative 1. So here's negative 1. x is all the greater than values. Anything bigger than negative 1 going this direction. All the bigger numbers are values of x. Now, x is also supposed to be less than negative 7. So here's negative 7. Anything less is going this direction. There's no equal signs with either of these inequalities, so I'm going to leave these as empty circles. And I'm going to get this answer for my number line, two shaded regions in different directions. And what that means is, is x can equal any number in the shaded region. x could be 2, 3, 4, 5. x could be negative 10, negative 20, negative 100. And it would make this inequality true. What x cannot equal is anything between negative 7 and negative 1. Anything in here is going to fail in that inequality. And let me prove it to you. Let's try x equals something out of the middle here, like negative 3. Just a random number. If x was negative 3 and I took my inequality, absolute value of 4 plus x is greater than 3, it should fail. So let's see. If I put negative 3 in here for the x, I'm going to have 4 plus negative 3, absolute value, is greater than 3. 4 plus negative 3 is 1, absolute value is greater than 3, and the absolute value of 1 is 1. Is 1 greater than 3? No, it's not. This one fails. 1's not greater than 3. That doesn't work. Any number I choose in this unshaded region is going to fail. Any number I choose out here in the green area, in the dark shaded region, is going to pass in this absolute value. So that's how, that's how my solution works, and that's part of the reason we have to flip this symbol, is to make that work, to get the right answer. If I hadn't flipped the symbol, 
I, I would get the wrong shaded region and the, the wrong values that would not make it true. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's try another one. And I would encourage you for this last example in this video to pause the video and see if you can solve it by yourself and then unpause the video and see if you get it right. I, you would want to see if you're doing this okay. So the last example is 5 absolute value 2 minus x is less than or equal to 10. Try it yourself to solve it and see if you can shade it on a number line. Okay, so hopefully you've tried it. I'm going to work through the problem now. Um, I noticed there's a 5 on the, abs on the outside of the absolute value, so I'm going to deal with that first by dividing it away. Divide by 5, divide by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So I have absolute value 2 minus x is less than or equal to 2. Now I'm ready to split this up and solve for two possible answers. Um, either 2 minus x is really going to be less than or equal to 2, just like it looks, or 2 minus x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. I'm going to change it to a negative and I'm going to flip that symbol. And I'm going to solve both these equations. So this first inequality, if I subtract the 2 over, 2 minus 2 is 0. So I have negative x is less than or equal to 0. And I don't want a negative x. I want a positive x. So I'm going to change that symbol, make it positive. But by doing so, it's going to flip this around to greater than or equal to 0. Another way you can think about that is it's almost like I just switch sides. I don't want a negative x. I want it to be a positive x. If I move it over here, x is now on the greater than side. So x is greater than or equal to 0. And if I move the 0 over, nothing really changes. So x is greater than or equal to 0 is one answer. On this side, let's see, subtract the 2 over. Move that over. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So I have negative x is greater than or equal to 4 going to change the signs and flip the symbol. It's kind of like I'm, I'm dividing by a negative 1. Or, if you don't like that, I'll, I'll do a flip flip here. Make it a positive 4 and a positive x. 4 is greater than or equal to x. And if you want to, you can switch that around to x is less than or equal to 4. Basically, it's this with a flip symbol. Or you've switched the signs. And then I'm going to take those two answers and put them on a number line. So here's 0. Here's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. Put a few other numbers on there. And I'm going to circle 0 and I'm going to circle 4. Try and do this the right way. Um, x is greater than or equal to 4. Equal to means, or greater than or equal to 0, excuse me. Equal to means I'm going to make it a solid point because it can equal 0. And everything greater than goes this direction. So these are all the greater than values. x is less than or equal to 4 means that 4 is going to also be a solid point. So I'm going to make 4 nice and dark and solid, although I've already shaded it once. And less than 4 means I'm going to be going, hmm, less than 4 means I'm going to go this way. Trying to, I'm going to try and use a different color here. I'll use orange on top of my green here. So less than 4 means all of these values. And it appears that the entire number line is shaded, but really I'm looking for the overlap. Where did I shade two times? And that would be the region between 0 and 4. Right here, that's the dark shaded region. So the answer for x is it can be anything between 0 and 4. Anything between 0 and 4 will make that absolute value true. All of the answers outside of 0 and 4 are going to fail in the inequality. So the answer is one of these sandwich problems where it's only between 0 and 4. And you can write your final answer like this if you feel like it. You can say, oh, okay, x is sandwiched between 0 and 4. It's greater than or equal to 0. It's less than or equal to 4. My final answer looks like that. And if you really wanted to, on that last example we did, on example 3, where we got these two answers, negative 1 and negative 7, you could write it like this. You could say, okay, x 
in negative 7 and negative 1. We'll write it like a sandwich problem. Looks like x was less than negative 7, so I'm going to put it like this. And x was greater than negative 1, so I'm going to make it like that. There's my inequality answer. We can sandwich it together. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope you can solve these absolute value equations and inequalities um, that you know how to split it up that you know when it's an inequality that you have to flip the sign with the negative one, and you know how to put it on a number line. Kind of a lot of steps to these, actually. All right, hope that helps. There'll be more videos on this soon.